welcome to Swipe. Here's what we've got for you on this very festive episode. Thomas finds out how your shiny new toys could be used to spy on you. I lay down a Christmas dinner challenge for a new home-cooked food delivery app. And what were your favourite video games of 2017? Simon brings us his, including fun from this little guy. That's all to come for you after a very quick look back at some of the moments in tech that got us all talking in 2017. Hacking became an even bigger deal in 2017. A WannaCry ransomware attack infected more than 300,000 computers in 150 countries in just days. The UK government blamed North Korea, which denied the accusations. We learned the extent of Russian efforts to influence the 2016 American election through social media. Facebook said Russian operatives published political posts that may have been seen by as many as 126 million Americans. Uber had a year of varying headlines. The company announced it had paid off hackers who stole data belonging to 57 million users. Separate from that, though, there were sexual harassment allegations, the departure of Uber's founder, Travis Kalanick, and the decision by transport bosses in London and other cities in the UK to take away its license to operate. Gadgets-wise, voice-activated home hubs like Amazon Echo started to become part of the family. Nintendo launched its Switch console and it soon became a bestseller, while Apple released its iPhone X, marking a decade of its smartphones. The handset featured facial recognition technology and carried a price tag of around £1,000. Now, we don't like to dwell on bad news here on Swipe, especially at this time of year, but Thomas has been looking at the sinister side to Christmas and how you might be inadvertently inviting hackers into your home. Are those gifts under your Christmas tree spying back at you? Some of this winter's favourite toys have been tested by an independent expert in security and privacy. Their security credentials were left wanting. So JP, what are these toys and what have they all got in common? Uh, so these are all smart toys um, which we found vulnerabilities um, in that way we're able to hack them and view information from them devices. As tech gets cheaper, it becomes easier to fit into toys. Take, for example, this remote control car, fitted with a camera and driven by a mobile app. JP demonstrates how anyone in range of the gadget's Wi-Fi can tap into the video stream. Imagine you're in a block of flats. Um, you've got some nosy neighbours who are sat alone on sort of Christmas Day. Um, they'd be able to connect to that, um, spy on the video without you knowing. Um, so as your child is driving it around, um, they'll be seeing what's in your home, what you're doing, um, potentially spying on your kids. Another gadget picked up by the expert was a Sky Viper streaming drone. Much like the car, anyone in range can have a snoop if no password changes are made to the device. For me, growing up, it was all building blocks and crayons for Christmas. But as tech advances, so do toys. Things like this one, this drone, costs as little as £100 and makes arguably a great Christmas present. But could techie toys actually be putting children in danger? The Q50 is a type of smartwatch for children, allowing parents to track their child's location, send them messages or monitor their conversations. As we sit here at Sky, JP demonstrates how he can trick one model into thinking it's halfway around the planet. So now we've made it believe that this watch is currently in Nevada, but it's not, it's, it's right here. Absolutely, it's in your hand, but you know, through the same technique I could make it look like the student, the child is at school, uh, where in fact they're somewhere elsewhere, else. Elsewhere, elsewhere. A would-be hacker does require the right skills and details of the watch to do this, but that's enough to have led to a blanket ban on the product in Germany. The problem with technology getting cheaper and smaller at the moment is that, that safety standards are not keeping up with the pace of that change. Um, just as we don't allow toxic paints um, on toys anymore, we need to have rules and regulations about how these toys need to be made safe for our kids. Varying levels of tech know-how and certain knowledge are needed to break into these gadgets. The company who commissioned the research and Sky News have both contacted the manufacturers of these products about the claims. So far, we've received no response. For now, have a thought for who's on the other side of the camera and be sure to alter factory passwords. Thomas Newton, Sky News. Now, what's your favourite thing about Christmas? 
for me, it's always been the food. Nothing beats a home-cooked dinner. And it seems some tech entrepreneurs feel the same way. There's now an app that lets you order meals cooked by a chef in his own home before being delivered to your door. What to eat? What to order? Welcome to my pretend sitting room. And meet my pretend friend, who also happens to be top chef and food writer Dan Doherty. I've enlisted his expertise to review the Home Food app. It lets you order meals that are cooked in a chef's own home. We want a Christmas dinner. We do. Apparently, duck is the new turkey. That's what I keep hearing. And check out. Done. While we prep the table, our chef, Alessandro, is receiving our request in his home kitchen, and he gets to work on our two Christmas orange confit duck dinners. Home Food says the majority of its chefs are professional cooks and all of their kitchens are inspected by environmental health. It isn't always this on demand though. To avoid waste, the app asks that you order by 3pm if you want an evening meal. Our dinner's ready and now on the way to Dan and I, courtesy of the delivery man. The service is currently only operating in parts of London but the team is hoping to expand. Oh, yeah. Hi, That's thank true. you very much. Here we go. Here we go, indeed. Our confit orange duck. Smells good. Ooh, nice and hot. Wait, it's nice and hot, isn't it? So, Dan, I'm really interested to hear while we're doing this what you think of the food and the experience. Right. So, most importantly, let's taste it first. I'm going for a bit of dark. Mm -hmm. Comfort food. Mm. Mm, I like this. I don't know if it would replace my Christmas turkey, though. I'm quite traditional. The interesting thing with these kind of apps mm -hmm. is that it gives chefs the opportunity to essentially manage and run their own business yeah. without having the overheads of setting up a restaurant which is daunting, expensive, scary. It's a lot cheaper than ordering from a restaurant. Do you think it could be a bit problematic though because you've got people with food allergies or you could have environmental health concerns if it's being cooked in people's own kitchens? When, you, when you're thinking of someone's home, it's probably likely to be a lot, kept a lot cleaner because it's someone's home, you know, there's an element of pride there. Really? Cleaner than professional kitchens? Uh, if you've got one person cooking in one home kitchen, yes. With the orange comfy duck going down nicely, let's all budge up on the sofa for a chat with the man who came up with the app. What's in it for the chefs? Yes, so uh, a lot of the chefs, we have different types of chefs on the platform. If you look at the, uh, the professional chef, they often have had a very stressful job at a restaurant, working 16 hours a day, six days a week. And uh, for them, they can now cook from their own house. Uh, if they sell 25 portions, they can actually make uh, a living out of this rather than working in a restaurant. How many dishes does each chef prepare a day? How many, how many varieties? Uh, so right now, the chefs prepare two varieties a day. So we have them making two signature dishes, the stuff that they really care about and love cooking. Of course, like uh, iconic signature. Like kind iconic, of exactly. They might love cooking those dishes, but for some people, homemade food will only ever be food that's made in your home. Time to talk about video games now with our reviewer Simon Miller. And for this festive episode, we asked him to pick his favourite video games of 2017. And we pulled out all the stops when it came to production and wardrobe. Horizon Zero Dawn, which is exclusive to the PlayStation 4, may very well be the best open world game that came out in 2017. And given that a lot of games in 2017 were open world games, that's a pretty big deal. And the best thing about it is that the enemies are giant mechanical robot dinosaurs. And as we all know, if a dinosaur is in a game, it instantly makes that game 10% better. However, the really cool thing about Horizon Zero Dawn is the main character, Aloy, because for starters, she's different to what you expect from a video game character. She's got a backstory, she's got history, and there's plenty of twists and turns that are going to keep you interested. That's especially important because the game goes for about 40 hours long. And also, the theme of Horizon Zero Dawn is ho, 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 ho. And yeah, that was, that was a Christmas reference. Either way, Horizon Zero Dawn, one of the best games of 2017. 
Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which did come out earlier in the year for the PC and more recently on the Xbox One and Xbox One X, may not technically be one of the best games of 2017, but when you sit down to play it, it absolutely is. And it's because the premise is so simple. You and up to 100 other players get parachuted into this world, and that's it. You've got no items, you've got no guns, you've got nothing, and all you're asked to do is survive. The problem is, all the other players are trying to kill you, and you've got to try and kill them. That is, however, why it works so well. Not only do you have to make sure you go and find a gun or some kind of medipack before you do get attacked, but you've also got to be on the lookout to kill other people, because the only way you win is to be the last person standing. It's a lot like the film Battle Royale, if you've ever seen that. Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch is not only one of the best games of the year, but it's one of those Mario games that when you sit down to play, you just smile inside because Nintendo knows how to make games with love and they know how to make games that fill you with emotion. And yeah, this is the same as what you always do in a Mario game. You step into the shoes of the plumber and you embark on a magical journey in a huge open world that's going to take you to a bunch of different environments where you jump on Mushroom's head and do all kinds of weird things that if you showed someone who didn't play video games, they're probably going to think you're a bit strange. And the big twist this time around is that Mario's hat is actually alive, so you can throw it onto animals and become that animal. So if you ever wanted to be an elephant or something like that in a Mario game, now you can, and once again, all of that is just going to fill you with glee. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is also exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, may seem like a strange game to throw in a best of 2017 list, mostly because it is just an update to Mario Kart 8 that came out on the Nintendo Wii U a few years ago. And yeah, on paper it does what it's always done. You can play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, Bowser, or anybody from the Mario franchise, and you just race around. But the racing is so good, and it's so exciting, and it's so fun, and it's so accessible to, once again, the fact that anybody can play it. You can't help but you enjoy yourself, and nothing is as thrilling or as annoying as being this close to the finishing line, getting red shelled, and going from first to dead last. That is the brilliance of the game, though. You hate it as much as you love it, and you just can't stop playing. It never gets old, and since it came out of April this year, I've literally played it every single day. I've just had myself a merry old time, and again, that is another Christmas reference. But yes, if I was going to call one game to be the best of 2017, I would give it to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of the show, but we can't say goodbye without showing you this. The world's smallest Christmas card, 50 microns wide and 20 tall. If you're wondering, one micron is one millionth of a metre. Researchers in the UK created it out of platinum-coated silicon nitride, and the message was carved by a focused iron beam. It's so tiny you can apparently fit more than 200 million of these Christmas cards into a space the size of a postage stamp. So if you missed the last post for your own Christmas cards, just pretend you sent one of these. Thank you for watching Swipe throughout 2017. We hope you can join us for more tech adventures in 2018. And remember to follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe. Bye bye.